And we ask that you will truly impress on the hearts and minds of all who listen to this message to turn their lives over to you before it is too late. Pray, Heavenly Father, that just as how you raise Jesus Christ from the dead, that you will indeed raise your people to a new experience with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Our message this evening is good news from the grave. Good news from the grave. I truly want to credit Dr. Ivette Williams, Ivette Williams, for the content, uh, most of the content of this sermon. And I trust and hope that it will be an inspiration to all of us. Good news from the grave. The grave is associated with sadness, depression, and bereavement. After all, it is said that nothing of great significance ever come out of the grave. There have been great scientific discoveries made in many places, all kinds of places, and under various circumstances. But it seemed as if nothing great has been discovered from the grave. Great speeches, pronouncements from presidents and poets, from orators, and even ordinary and extraordinary people. But none have been made from the grave. But thanks be to God, this evening I can emphatically say to you that there is good news that I can share with you from the grave. I'm happy that when we talk about Jesus, I can tell you of good news from the grave. Turn your Bibles to St. Matthew chapter 28. St. Matthew 28. I read from verse 1. Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it, praise God. His countenance was like lightning, his clothing as white as snow. And the guard stood for fear of him and became like dead men. The angel answered and said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, come see the place where the Lord laid. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going before you 
into Galilee. There you will see him. And behold, I have told you. Good news from the grave. Mary and the other Mary, along with some other women, anxiously returned to the tomb of Jesus where they laid his body because they were anxious to complete the task of anointing his body which they had not finished before the Sabbath began because on Friday as it is called Good Friday in Christendom on Friday Jesus Christ laid down his life on Calvary's cross. Jesus was crucified. And I want you to know, friends, that when he gave up the ghost, when he said, it is finished, the earth shook in sadness. When he said, it is finished. A darkness came over the midday sun. When Jesus said it is finished, darkness came over the evening sun. When Jesus said it is finished, oh, the priest who was ministering in the temple. At the evening sacrifice, the lamb got up from the altar. The, 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 the veil uh, that separated the holy from the most holy, the veil was torn. And the earth in anger, the earth in bereavement, the earth in incredible sorrow about the death of Jesus shook. There was an earthquake, uh, 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 but it was an earthquake of sorrow. But early Sunday morning, when Gabriel left heaven, came down here at a mighty speed, and early that Sunday morning, the earth shook again. But it was no more an earthquake of sadness. This time the earth rejoiced because Jesus, the Savior, is alive. The earth shook in unprecedented joy because Jesus the Savior is no longer in the grave. He is indeed alive. And I say amen. Friday, it was darkness. Sunday morning, it was tremendous light. Friday, it was sadness. Sunday morning, it was tremendous joy. Good news from the grave. The world was shaken by this incredible miracle of Christ coming to life after he volunteered to lay down his life for the sins of the world. The angel rolled back the stone. Jesus, who was sleeping, was called son of man thy father called you and up from the grave he arose he arose and because he is alive there is good news from the grave today because he's alive there is good news from the grave this evening 
when the angel touched down on planet earth, when he touched down at the graveside of Jesus, the Bible says the Roman soldiers were amazed. The Roman soldiers were afraid. So much so uh, that they became like dead men. What a tremendous experience it was. As on that Sunday morning, when Jesus came forth from the grave, uh, 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 the devil and the house of hell could not prevent Jesus from coming to the, up from the grave. No matter what the devil scheme, Jesus came forth. And Jesus came forth shouting, I have the keys of hell and death. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Because I have the keys of hell and death. Hear me, somebody. Because Jesus is alive, there is good news from the grave. And so the angel said to the women, this is the first good news. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. In the Greek language, this is a subjunctive prohibition. And, and there are two types of such prohibitions. One is a friendly Persuasion against embarking on a course of action one has never taken before. Do not be afraid. Don't get afraid. But the other is an imperative and an urgent command to stop an action already started. The first is a, is a persuasion not to get into the action, not to do it. But the second is, is indeed an imperative to stop doing what someone has already started doing. So the angel used, it, 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 it's an imperative Stop being afraid. You don't have to be afraid, ladies. It is the soldiers who need to be afraid because they are the enemy of Jesus. You are the friends of Jesus. Do not be afraid. And today, this evening, on this side of of a crucifixion, we are given the same good news. And the first good news from the grave to every worshiper tonight is that Jesus is saying, the angel is saying, do not be afraid. Stop it. There is no need to be afraid because Jesus is alive and I say amen. Jesus is alive. So don't be afraid. Stop it. There are so many things in our world today that make us fearful. As a matter of fact, friends, I, I know overseas that you are not used to burglar bars. But out here in Jamaica, most of the home houses out here have to be burglar bars. Our, our houses are burglar bars. Our homes are Burglar bar, our, our entire life is like we are in prison. 
because of fear. We live like prisoners in our own homes. Uh, we have to, some individuals are privileged to have alarm system. Some individuals are privileged uh, to have more than alarm system. Uh, they have evil weapon. Some individuals have their own personal legal firearm. Some individuals have to use cameras. Uh, some individuals even have guard dogs and even personal guard because we live in a fearful time. But I'm saying to somebody, uh, no matter what security system that you have in this fearful world, the best security to have is Jesus. Somebody needs to say amen. Because when burglar bars fail, when security system fail, when, when the gun, as a matter of fact, if the owner is sleeping, the gun is sleeping. When dogs can't help, when electronic system can't help, there is a God who never sleep. There's a God who never slumber. He is our best defense of security. And it is this God who is saying, as the angel said from the grave, Fear not. I know, my brothers and my sisters, I know we are living in a time of heightened fear. Uh, the crime rate, not only in Jamaica, but right across the world, is fast rising. The hearts of men are desperately wicked. So many wicked things are happening. And even in the midst of COVID-19, rising of the new strain, the Delta virus strain of COVID-19, it is spreading across um, America from Europe coming right across the Americas. It is in almost... All countries know and it is fearful. Individuals are fearful. Individuals are, are wondering what is happening. Live in a fearful world. But it is in the midst, hallelujah. It is in the midst of this level of fear. It is in the midst of this pandemic. It is in the midst of this uncertainty that I still hear the voice of the angel echoing from the grave. Fear not. Be not dismayed. Fear not. He is indeed alive. Stop being afraid. Stop being fearful. He is alive. And I say, Amen. The, 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 the enemy of faith is fear. The enemy of faith is fear. And the devil will drive fear in all of us so as to diminish our faith in Almighty God. But from the grave this evening, the voice is echoing, fear not. There is good news from the grave. I am not afraid because God is alive. God help us to reach to the point where we can stand up by faith. Even though the whole world around us is crumbling, the angel is saying, stand up by faith. Christ 
is your friend. He is not your enemy. Fear not. And that's why the Apostle Paul was able to say, For I am persuaded, I am persuaded that neither height nor debt, nothing past or present or future, no angel, no principality, no power, no demon or person. No force of opposition, no sickness, no death can able to separate me from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. The good news from the grave is that we don't have to be afraid. Fear not. Fear not. Jesus is alive. Fear not. He is alive. He is risen. Uh, and one day, the mossy old graves where the pilgrims sleep shall be open as wide as before. And the millions that sleep in the mighty deep shall live on this earth again. We don't have to fear. Not even death itself. Not even death itself. We don't have to fear death. We don't have to fear the grave because Jesus is alive. Somebody need to raise a hand in the chat and say praise the Lord. Somebody needs to raise a hand and say hallelujah. Because indeed, Jesus is alive. And the first message is fear not. The second good news from the grave uh, 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 that the angel gave to the, the, the women is that Jesus is not here. So the first is fear not. The second, he is not here because death could not control him. Death could not hold him. He is not here. He is risen. Well, the wages of sin is dead, but not even death could hold the body of Jesus down. As a matter of fact, friends, uh, uh, the wages of sin began with the act of one woman. The wages of sin began with the act of Eve in the garden of Eden and praise God the end hallelujah the message the message of the doom of sin the message of the victory over sin was given to one woman it was given to the women hey 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 Jesus whom you seek is not here he is alive he is risen. He is risen. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. Life is worth a living just because he's alive. Sin, wages of sin started by one woman and praise God the announcement of the victory over sin the announcement that the grave could not hold him down the announcement that Jesus is alive was given to the women he is not here he is risen he is alive I serve that risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living. Whatever men may say, I see his hands of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. And somebody on the chat, somebody who is making a decision, somebody who is discouraged, somebody who is disappointed, needs to know just the time I need him. 
He's always near. He lives. He lives. He lives. I know. He lives. He walks with me and he talks with me. A long life's narrow way. He lives. He lives. You ask me how? I know he lives. Praise God. He lives within my heart. Praise God. He lives within my heart. And I say amen. And listen to me somebody. I am happy that I don't serve a dead God. I'm happy that my Savior is indeed alive. And there are some individuals who criticize the Adventist church and say, hey, you are worshiping a dead God. Listen to me. I, as a matter of fact, I am worshiping a God who was obedient to his very own word. But early that Sunday morning, my Jesus is alive. Came from the grave. And because he lives, somebody needs to know that truth lives. Praise God. Because he lives, hope endures. Because he lives, love triumphs. Uh, virtue is justified because Jesus is alive. Uh, 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 integrity is legitimated because Jesus is alive. Righteousness is imputed. Righteousness is imparted. And one day, God's children will be glorified. Hear me. Let me praise my God tonight because he's alive. Salvation is real. Because Jesus is alive. Salvation is real. Holiness is real. Grace is sufficient. Mercy is available uh, because Jesus is alive. Salvation is paid. Salvation is guaranteed because Jesus is alive. Those who are burdened will be relieved because Jesus is alive. Those who are oppressed will be liberated because Jesus is alive. Justice will roll down the mountain because Jesus is alive. The judgment is a vindication of God's people. And I say amen. The good news, second good news, the first good news, don't be afraid. The second good news he is not here. He is risen. He is alive. Oh, I wish I could tell you the joy of my heart. I wish I could tell you the rejoicing in my soul this evening to know that my Jesus, your God, is alive. And because Jesus lives, faith is also alive because Jesus lived. We do not have to carry the weight of sin anymore because Jesus lives. Hope lives. And because Jesus lives, we can come to you with a message from an empty grave. An empty grave is there to prove that my Savior is alive. You go to any grave that a body was buried in and, and, and it's undisturbed. You will see remains there. Uh, 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 uh. But when it comes on to my Jesus, an empty grave is there to prove my Savior and your Savior is alive. Oh, I feel like praising God this evening. Because Jesus lived, faith and hope is alive. He is Jesus. 
is the heavyweight champion of the world. Jesus is the heavyweight champion of life. Jesus is the heavyweight champion of our salvation. He defeated the devil in heaven. He defeated the devil at Calvary. He defeated the devil early that Sunday morning. And one more time he will defeat that old serpent. Because Jesus Christ he is invincible. Jesus, he is incomprehensible. Jesus, he is indestructible. Jesus, he is indescribable. Jesus, he is irresistible. Jesus, he is indeed alive. I want you to know, friends, now the heaven of heavens cannot contain him. Uh, man cannot explain him. You cannot get him out of your mind. You cannot get him out of your mind. You cannot get him off your hands. You cannot outlive him. You cannot live without him. The Pharisees could not stand him, but they found him. Not guilty. Pilate found it not no fault with him. The witnesses couldn't get their testimonies to agree. Herod could not kill him. Death could not handle him. The grave could not hold him. He is indeed alive. And I say amen. Somebody need to say praise the Lord. So the second good news, he is not here. He is risen. He's alive. And then the third piece of good news is go. Go tell. Go tell somebody. Oh, bless my soul this evening. Holy Spirit, fall on me now. Third good news, the ladies were told, go tell the disciples, go quickly, tell his disciples that Jesus Christ is alive. Tell Peter, tell John. Tell all his disciples, because as you can remember, the disciples deserted him. Some of them followed him afar off. Uh, Peter denied him. You know uh, 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 that Judas betrayed him. All the others scattered for their lives. But the message is, go tell those disciples. Go tell somebody that Jesus is alive. Uh, let the world know that he is risen. Let the world know that he is alive. Don't keep it to yourself let it be known that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is alive let the disciples know let Herod know let Pilate know let those Roman soldiers know uh, let skeptics know let all those who shout crucify him, let them know. Let it be echoed from one corner to another. He is not dead. He is alive. And so, it is our message today to tell to the world that he is risen. And, and listen to me. Let's not try 
Let's not try to justify anything. Let us just tell the story as it is. Jesus, the Savior of the world, he is risen. He is alive. Somebody needs to hear this good news. And so the good news from the grave. Not only should you not be afraid. Not only. He is not here. He is risen. But the next piece of good news. Tell somebody that he is risen. And that's why nature speaks hope for tomorrow. Is here to let you know that in spite of what is happening, Jesus Christ is not dead. There is hope for tomorrow. And no matter what you're going through, there is hope in Jesus. There is hope in God. Your sufferings will not last. Your fears will not last forever because your Savior is indeed alive. Go tell the disciples. Let it echo far and wide that the Savior is indeed alive. And I, brothers and my sisters, if Jesus is alive, then there is nothing impossible with him. There is no situation that you'll find yourself in that Jesus cannot handle. He is indeed the risen Savior. No matter what your challenges are, your God is able to take care of them. Stop being afraid. Stop being anxious. Take no thought what you shall eat or what you shall drink. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, and all things shall be added unto you. Why? Because your Savior is alive. We shall have somebody this evening to praise God with me in such a way that I just have to seek Jesus. It doesn't say that I won't have challenges. It doesn't say I won't have difficulties. It doesn't say I won't face hardship. But my Jesus, they will not overcome me because my Savior is alive. And I say amen. I know my time is going, but I want to share an incident with you that Hybert Williams shared. This is one of my favorite stories. I close this evening with two of my favorite stories about the power, of, the miraculous power of a risen Savior. I close this evening. I have told the story of an incident that happened with a teenage nephew of one of her the elders of her church in New York City. He was struck by a stray bullet. Listen to me, somebody. Somebody who is doubting the power of God need to listen to this miracle. Somebody who is putting off his or her soul salvation. Somebody who is doubting whether you can make it. Hey, hey, hey. It's God on your side. And God is alive. 
one of her elders. His nephew was struck by a stray bullet one Friday afternoon in New York City. The bullet permanently lodged itself in the back of his head, leaving him unconscious. The MRI confirmed that there was no expectation for recovery. But early the Sabbath morning, Gilberto, who was, is the name of the elder, he was called to his nephew's side, called to his nephew's bedside. And so he gathered the family for one last farewell to the nephew. And as it happened, the church had a prayer service that morning. A prayer service that morning. And Gilberto stopped for prayer and support before rushing off to New York. The church joined in prayer and they circle the elder and someone pleaded that God should go before Gilberto to perform a miracle on his nephew. Several hours later as Gilberto sat by his nephew's Head, holding his lifeless hand, Gilberto began to cry and pray. He said, Lord, you are our risen Savior. Gilberto, as he held the lifeless hand of his nephew, cried out to Almighty God and said, God, you are the risen Savior. You can do something special for us and this child. As he prayed urgently in the midst of the prayer, the boy, the lifeless boy began to cough, cough. And he coughed so hard. That blood spurted from his mouth. As a nurse was called. And to wipe away the blood. As a nurse immediately wiped the blood away. In case it would block the young man's breathing. As she wiped his mouth. She discovered that the bullet had come out with the blood. She discovered that the bullet came out with the blood. The physicians were amazed. They emphasized that there was no way that bullet could travel through from the back of the head to the mouth without destroying some vital tissues and, and, and taking the boy's life. But hear me somebody. The risen savior is on the work. God had gone. Before Gilberta. And performed this incredible miracle. On his nephew. And within weeks. He was released from the hospital and was doing well. Praise God. He is a miracle working God. He's alive. Our God is able to go before us and to remove all obstacles 
that lie in the way. I normally tell individuals that the God I serve is able to leave us in the present, go into our future, change the future, come back to the present and say the pathway is clear. Oh, somebody needs to know that we serve a miracle working God. That he's risen. And any time we're in trouble, call, tell the devil that you know that Jesus is alive. Somebody today need to put his or her trust in almighty God. God will go before you in your marriage. And he, 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 he will solve and iron out the rough edges. God will go before you in any obstacle that you face. He will straighten the way. God will go before you with your children who are rebellious. God will go before you for that husband. God will go before you for that wife. God will go before you for that boyfriend or that girlfriend. God will go before you for that job. God is a miracle working God. He's alive. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. And therefore, the message from the grave is so important. Be, do not be afraid. That's message one. Good news from the grave. Do not be afraid. The second is that, hey, he is not here. He's alive. And the third thing, go tell somebody. Go tell the disciples. Go tell somebody. Tell somebody in St. Elizabeth. Tell somebody in Hanover. Tell somebody in Westmoreland, in St. James. Across the world, he's alive. And I can call on him because he's not dead. He's alive. He goes before us. He can do great miracles. The greatest discovery was made by those women. While Jesus Christ is alive, the tomb is empty. He's alive. I close with one of my favorite stories of the miracle working power of Jesus Christ. And any time I tell this story, it brings tears to my eyes to know friends that hear me. If there is one person you can put your trust and confidence in, is your risen Savior. You don't have to bear the burdens of sin anymore. You don't have to walk in an un, uh, connect, in a disconnected uh, way, life with Jesus. You don't have to. Because all you need is Jesus Christ with Jesus on your side. You are in the majority. With Jesus on your side, the devil is defeated. With Jesus on your side, there is no power in hell that can conquer you. With Jesus on your side. For he's risen. I'll close with my favorite story. A Muslim man in Egypt killed his wife. Because she was reading the Bible. Then he buried her and their infant baby and eight-year-old daughter. He buried her with the two girls alive. Mm. Buried his wife. Killed her. And then he buried her 
with an infant baby and an eight-year-old. They were buried alive. The girls, then he reported to the police that an uncle killed the kids. A church here is somebody. Fifteen days later, another family member died. And when they went to bury him, they found the two girls beneath the sand alive. Oh, bless my soul. They found the two girls alive. The country was outraged over the incident. And the man was executed. But the story gets even better. The older girl was asked how she had survived. And she said she was interviewed by an Egyptian national television anchor newswoman and she said a man wearing shining clothes with bleeding wounds in his hands came every day to feed us he woke up my mother so she could nurse my sister and then The Muslim anchor woman on national television said in a Muslim country, this is no other than Jesus Christ himself. And with nails in his hands is a clear indication that Jesus Christ is alive. He does not know what the Muslim community is going to do about this. Because they cannot hide this. It's a clear indication that Jesus Christ is turning the world upside down. The angels said, go tell the disciples. Go tell everybody that Jesus Christ is alive. And we are telling it to Muslims. We are telling it to Hindus. We are telling it to the Buddhist. We are telling it to Confucius. We are telling it to everybody. I don't business what you want to believe. All I know is that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is alive. The tomb is empty. He lives and is turning this world upside down. God the Son. And Jesus has the power. To transform your life. Jesus has the power. To raise you up. From your situation. Jesus has the power. To change your condition. To change your situation. All you have to do. Is to give him a chance. In your life. It is full time. To stop putting off. It is full time to stop procrastinating. It is time to turn it over to Jesus. Yes, sir, you don't know what the future holds, but I know somebody who holds the future. Yes, young lady, you don't have to turn back because God is able to keep us. 
from falling. Yes, you don't know where the next bill is going to come from. Yeah, worst in COVID-19. Uh, but David reminds us he has never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. If God could send a raver, if God could send a scavenger in the height of drought to feed his servant, God in COVID time can't find a way. God can still take care of his people. Put your trust in him. Put your trust in him. Because there is good news from the grave. Uh, the good news is that you don't have to be afraid. The good news is that he is not here. He is risen. The good news is that somebody needs to know that Jesus is alive. Friends. If I were you, I turn my life to Jesus Christ. Come on, parents. If the devil wants your children dead, then the only way to keep them alive is to give them to Jesus Christ. He can still take care of you. No matter what dire situation your children are in, Jesus can still feed them. Jesus can still provide for them. I'm calling on parents. Come on, Seventh-day Adventist parents. Give your children to the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, they will give trouble. Yes, they will not understand the Bible, everything about the Bible. Yes, they will not understand everything about the doctrines. Yes, they'll give trouble. Uh, but hear me. If you don't give them to Jesus, uh, then you are introducing them to other forces. The best protection that they have is Jesus Christ. And I strongly believe this. Train up a child in the way they should go. Suffer the little children to come unto me. Some calling on parents to lead their children to the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't let the devil empower them. Don't let the devil have them as mastery over them. Lead them to Jesus. Yes, they will not understand everything. Look at me now. When I got baptized, I didn't understand everything. And if, if, if my friends from Rossi's High School could tell you some of the things, I hope they don't. Look at my an eye today. Look. It's God's transforming power. God can do it for you. He can do it for your children. He can do it for a wayward person. Just give Jesus a chance in your life. Tomorrow. It's going to be baptism right across West Jamaica Conference. And we have given the information for individuals overseas. Tomorrow is going to be a tremendous baptism. You can be a part of that baptism. Like the eunuch, you can say, here is water. What hinderest thou me from being baptized? And some of you have decided and things are discouraging you. Stand up for Jesus. Because there is good news from the grave. Do not be afraid. Let nothing discourage you. As a matter of fact, uh, 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 the, the, the angel was saying, stop it. Don't be afraid. Let nothing discourage you. 
Because the second good news, he is not here. He is risen. And the third, go tell somebody that Jesus Christ is alive. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. And life is just a living. Because he lives, there is good news from the grave. Our oh, Father God in heaven, oh, we are so glad to know that our Savior, Jesus Christ, is alive. And because he lives, salvation is guaranteed. Because he lives, hearts can be transformed. Because he lives, there is hope. Because he lives, the devil is defeated. Because he lives, the host of hell is doomed. 